Hi. I have not made a video since last month, I guess, but I've been working on this project since my last video. And that is my self-portrait doll. Please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Peggy Portals, and I make DIY and craft content. And today, Today I'm very excited because I'm going to go through more or less a step-by-step -step process of the very kind of tedious tasks that I went through to take a Tessa and Mina doll from Rainbow High and turn them into this beautiful self-portrait doll. I would say that I did a pretty good job. We have matching glasses, we have a matching mullet, we have matching four braids, this is an outfit I would definitely wear, and she's wearing jewelry, I'm a jewelry designer, and yeah, all the way down to our matching tattoos. Very cool, very cool. So, oh yeah, and she is a girl, like me. Um, so yeah, I am going to just hop right on in with the voiceover and I'll include some better up close videos of my dear little tiny Peggy when we get to the end. So bye! This is the prep for the doll, taking out its eyes, cutting its hair, um, getting the head overall ready to be customized. I picked up this pattern for rainbow high size dolls off of Etsy from this creator, Okasana. Um, I probably butchered your name, I'm sorry, but she made an incredible pattern, super easy to follow. I cut out all the pieces as instructed as needed, and I laid them all out, as you can see here, the backs, the fronts, the belt, the belt loops, the pocket facing, and the pocket lining. Um, I had never sewed a pair of pants before, human size or doll size, prior to doing this. Um, so it just goes to show that this pattern was really well made because I was able to follow along pretty seamlessly. Um, I went ahead and cut the little slots that she recommended um, inside of the pants to prepare them for folding. And then I worked on folding back um, the piece of like the pocket bit. This is it ironed down um, and then this is it sewed down. Um, so it's important to iron because you get the nice crispy edge and this is me kind of doing the facing and the lining of the pockets um, sewed that in um, this is not really a tutorial but you can see you know what I'm doing I side the, I sewed excuse me the front and the back of the legs together um, which is really cool because you really start seeing it all come together I ironed the extra bits down on the inside and I used fabric glue which I love to hem the pants working at this small of a scale um, working with the glue really helped to ensure that everything stayed where it like needed to be and then I sewed down that trim there um, and then this is wow it looks so cool doesn't it it's basically the pants um, just not put together it's like all flat um, and I worked on the belt loops and the belt here. There's a lot of really small pieces. So again, I recommend using fabric glue to hold everything in where you need it as you work on it. Those are the two belt loops. Um, so pinning everything here together with the clips of where it will be sewed together. And then look, the belt is on, the belt loops are on pants are just flat and need to be attached, which I do here um, with the inner seam. It took me a while to get them to turn inside out because they are quite small. Um, so I went ahead and just jumped forward to you being able to see me turn the pants right side out. And here are the pants on this Jewel Richie body. Really quickly, we're going to talk about Rit Dye and Dying. I bought the wrong color hair, nylon hair. So I went ahead and used some synthetic grit dye on the stove and dyed it up, washed it out, and you'll see that more later. Hi, this probably isn't the greatest filming setup, but I've just been on my iPad mimicking all of my tattoos. I finally got a replacement pen um, for my iPad and I have in Procreate been <clears throat> reproducing all of my tattoos which you probably can't see. 
And this is my chest tattoo. Um, I took some photos of my body and I traced it in Procreate and I'm using the ruler tool in Canva to make sure they're all more or less the same size. I'm gonna print them on water, uh, transfer paper, and put them on my doll. Um, here I am um, printing out the guide that I made for my tattoos. Luckily, rainbow high dolls are basically the same height as an American size of paper, 8.5 by 11 paper. So I use the ruler tool on Canva um, and Procreate to basically work together to make a template for all of my tattoos and figuring out what size they needed to be when they were printed out so that they would work proportionally on the rainbow high body. I use these water slide decals. Um, or decal paper clear for an inkjet super easy to use um, but you need to follow the instructions um, so this is me actually printing it out onto the water slide decal make sure to spray it with a couple coats of mr super clear or some kind of acrylic spray so that the um, ink doesn't bleed when you actually transfer it um, speaking of mr super clear is what the doll community on the internet has told me is good so it's what i use i am outside on my balcony prepping the body after it was kind of washed down since it was bought secondhand on mercari i'm spraying the face here also with mr super clear and also with my respirator on please wear your respirator um this is the water slide decal after the Mr. Super Clear has dried and I'm just going in with my little tiny baby scissors which I love crafting with to cut out all of the tattoos. I'm trying to keep them pretty close to the edge so that when they're transferred onto the doll there's not like a ton of excess like clear paper. Um, but this is one of my main tattoos. It's my chest piece. It's a lot of tattoos that are all kind of connected. But yeah, you can see some of my different tattoos here. Um, and this is the instructions for the water side decal. Definitely read them if you're going to use it. Um, maybe the instructions are different for other brands, but this is just what it was for the ones I used. So you go ahead and, um, put the water slide decal into some water and quite literally as the name suggests the decal just slides off the backing and because it's clear um, you're able to see pretty you know clearly um, the details of that tattoo as it appears on the skin color of the vinyl or whatever plastic doll and I'm just using tweezers to kind of line it up here I was able to get really great detail with these decal slides considering the scale is really different from my body to my doll's body um, but it looks super cool and I'm also prepping the head with some um, just acrylic paint that's been mixed up to match my hair color better um, and just painting the scalp if you want the hair to appear full always paint the scalp and I also um, sealed that with Mr. Super Clear and then here I am just using a mini flat iron to flat iron out the hair. This is okay the most tedious probably of all of the activities or like like different parts of a custom doll. I like to actually use you know rooted hair in my dolls because it allows them to have better play quality or at least that's what i've heard and i suspect that to be true um so i'm making a bunch of wefts of hair loose hair um from the bundle that i had dyed and i'm going to be folding them into halves and taking super glue and essentially making a hair plug i just twist it in half at the top so it gets nice and skinny and i use a little drop of super glue my hands get super messed up while i do this probably not recommended um, i don't do it all the time so i tell myself it's okay but there you go i cut off the end and basically it's a hair plug that can be loaded into a tagging gun i had seen someone else on the internet using a tagging gun um to reroute their dolls instead of doing it by hand with a single needle this is just a lot more comfortable for me. The hair plug creation is super tedious, but I might have found a hack for that. Um, check back for future videos because I am going to be doing an experiment with that. Since I have a mullet and I wanted my doll to also have a mullet, I thought it would be useful to kind of just map out where the different sections of the hair would be. I am by no means a hairdresser or stylist. This is all very improvis improvis 
improvisational based on kind of what my barber does. Um, so just marking out where parts need to be short and long. Here's a status update of how long the hair has gotten. That's kind of about where I decided to start transitioning to shorter pieces. So I started preparing shorter wefts or shorter hair plugs. So you can see this is where I started transitioning into having short hair kind of fold into the long hair to make the mullet. And I was really struggling to put the eyes from the Mina doll into the Tessa's head. And so I just went ahead after like burning my fingers using a hair dryer to soften the head to try to pop them in normally. I went ahead and just cut open Tessa's head. Um, this was easier to do because the head was already warm from trying to push them in normally. I was able to remove the extra fuzz from when I originally took out the doll's hair. And you can see where I cut the eye sockets um, so that I could put in the Mina eyes into the Tessa head. Um, and then it was pretty much of kind of a struggle to put the skull or like the head plate back together. I did an initial layer of just super glue, which is obviously my go-to. And then I had to do some layers of Mod Podge mixed with paint, mixed with super glue. It looks, it looks, it looks a lot easier here than it actually was um, in the end. But yeah, I think a combination of super glue is probably the best for... But look how great those eyes look. Um, I actually started to glue down some tufts of hair for the mullet instead of plugging or like rooting each of them. I thought that that would be kind of a nice shortcut. Um, I'm prepping the doll's face here again for um, painting. I kept it super minimal ultimately. I just kind of darkened the doll's eyebrows, made them a little bit more like mine look when they're drawn on because I don't have great natural eyebrows. Um, I just really like how this part of the video looks. I'm going over the factory eyebrows that the Tessa doll had came with, but as you can see here, adding some more feathered details, things to make it look a little bit more like my eyebrows rather than the factory eyebrows that Tessa came with. And then I'm again using my tiny little scissors to cut the hair now that it's basically done. I have it braided back. Um, but all the hair at the top is shorter, basically, you know, just like my mullet. And I really also like how this video footage looks sped up of me going around and cutting the doll's hair. Um, I refined it, kept refining it, and this is kind of how the doll looked at this point. Um, I didn't show me coloring the lips, but that was super straightforward um, with pastel. And then I went ahead and used some metallic acrylic paint, basically as lip gloss to add some more dimension to the lips. I don't personally wear lip gloss, but considering this is a doll and it's supposed to be a little bit more dramatica than you are normally, I thought that this would be a nice touch. And I really liked how it looked with like the duochrome sparkles. Now to tackle the glasses. These were glasses purchased off of Etsy. They're originally intended for a Blith doll. As you might know, Blith heads are quite bigger. So I used a little handsaw for plastic here to cut down the actual arms of the glasses after I removed the screws and were able to, you know, kind of take them apart. I debated for a while what was going to be the best way to make these glasses work for a rainbow high shaped, um, head or the proportions of the head. So here you see like basically the size differences that I made with the saw. Um, I ultimately decided on the arms being this size um, and I used some wire, like bendable wire and UV <laughs> resin nail polish. Um, so the idea is basically that the arms are going to kind of go along the side of the doll's head but wire is what's actually going to be folded over the ear to keep them in place and then um yeah so you can see me attaching basically the wire here i'm sorry that it's out of focus i was just really trying to focus to get this done and i put it under the uv light and then here i am with a sock giving the final touches the doll turned out so beautifully it really took weeks for me to put this project together um, but I'm so happy with how it turned out, so please leave a comment, or would you make a me doll? 
What do you think? Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with me while I made my beautiful self-portrait doll. Come back. Subscribe for more crafts. Goodbye. Please like and subscribe.